Hi everybody, you are watching tutorials. My name is Alex and today I'm gonna show you how to create this clock icon in Adobe Illustrator. So let's start with a new document. I'm, I sized this document with 1920 by 1080 and covered with the light gray rectangle. I'm gonna lock this rectangle on the one layer and create another one. On the new layer, I'm gonna grab my rounded rectangle tool, hit once on my artboard and set the width to 780 pixels, height to 780 pixels and corner radius to 160 pixels. Click OK. I'm gonna align this rectangle to the center of my document, both horizontally and vertically and apply a gradient for them. First, we need to start for, for, with the basic gradient. Then double click on the dark color and reduce the darkness to 11 pixels. Now I'm gonna grab my gradient tool and align this gradient from bottom left to top right. So it's half light color on the top and dark color on the bottom. Now we need to create a smaller copy. In order to do that, go to the object, path and offset path. And we need to offset this path to negative 6 pixels. Check preview, click OK. And for this smaller copy, we need to simply reverse the gradient. So click on this nice button here, reverse the gradient. Really, really nice. So let's go and create a circle, actual clock. Grab your ellipse tool, click L, hit on your artboard and set the width and height of the circle to 625 pixels. Click OK. Align them both horizontally and vertically. Then for this circle, I'm gonna set the gradient to ra radial. And for the first color, for the first slider, this is dark slider, we need to navigate and change it to RGB. And for this hexadecimal value, here on this field, I'm gonna type 3C, 3C, 3C and apply the changes. It's pour a dark color in the middle of my uh, clock. Then Select this white color. Navigate to RGB mode. In the same field, type 5F, 5F, 7A and apply the color. Then reverse the gradient. So our light portion now is the center. Make a duplicate of this circle. Ctrl C, Ctrl F. With this duplicate, first of all, swap fill and stroke. Change the type of gradient to liner and distribute it across the stroke. Stroke this third value on the road. Like so. Now double click on the lightest portion and apply a black all of these RGB values to zero. Do the same with this. Apply black. And for this portion, we need to set a passage from 100 to zero. Click OK. Now let's increase the stroke weight to 20 points. And as you can see, it's cast the shadow both in both ways. Uh, we need to go to the stroke and align it to inside. But the distribution of our gradient doesn't allow us to do that. So we need to simply go to the object, path and offset the path. And offset value we need to set to negative 10 pixels, which is uh, half of our stroke. I hope it makes sense for you. Click OK uh, and create, delete the original file. Now it's cast the shadow only 
on our cloth, not on this background of our app. So let's make a duplicate of this stroke with Ctrl C, Ctrl F and reduce the size dramatically to around 90 pixels. Very nice. I'm gonna set the stroke to around 10 pixels. Duplicate this circle, Ctrl C, Ctrl F, swap fill and stroke. And change the. Uh, I'm gonna actually select for this duplicate uh, that this. Uh, I'm gonna sample this gradient and then change the type from liner to radial. So it has now a stroke, a, a gradient that is uh, white to 11% gray. Okay? Now we need to create arrows and in order to do that grab your rounded rectangle tool and I'm gonna set the 225 pixels of width and height to 50 pixels and reduce the corner radius to 24 pixels click OK I'm gonna also apply this uh, gradient here and align it like so Now I'm gonna set it to 45 degrees and align it to the middle of our uh, circle. Okay. Then we change the arrangement of the circle and its shadow. Now we need to create uh, our minute uh, arrow. In order to do that we need to create another rounded rectangle. But in this case, we need to set the width to 250 pixels and uh, height to 36 pixels and corner radius reduced to 18 pixels. Click OK. Then I'm gonna rotate it like so on 45 degrees to the left, place it here and now we can go to and find our ellipses both shadow and uh, simple ellipse and with the ctrl shift right, uh, right bracket move it on the bottom of our layer stack okay now we need to create actually duplicates and paste them on bottom of these arrows i'm gonna create these shadows as well First of all, I'm gonna sample this. Then again, I'm gonna navigate to the stroke and distribute them across. Make sure that it's liner. Then reverse the gradient, like so. You can actually play with this gradient, or uh, you can use the effects the light drop shadow. Probably we can shift a bit uh, these objects. First of all, reducing this uh, the stroke, and then I'm gonna shift this to the bottom. So looks very nice. Uh, and our last is to create a second arrow. So let's start with a circle that has a thirty-six pixels diameter width and height 36 okay i'm gonna cover it with solid color and this uh, the hue of this solid color is 11 46 60 great now create a duplicate of this ctrl c ctrl f and move it to the bottom just a bit and with this duplicate and this original file go to the shape builder tool or click shift M and select this lunar shape okay I'm gonna delete this part and with this lunar shape I'm gonna shift the hue and saturation and brightness 
to my bottom right to darkest color okay so it's kind of create a small shadow then i'm gonna duplicate this path the shadow this lunar shape ctrl c ctrl f shift it arrange it on the top with ctrl shift right bracket reduce the size of it and create a highlight from it in order to do that first of all i'm gonna sample the gradient then go double click on this 11% gray portion of gradient set it to black i'm gonna set it to rgb black very nice now let's arrange it properly from bot bottom from top to bottom no from bottom to top really nice and go to transparency and change the blending mode to screen and reduce the opacity to 40 pixels 40 percent now it has more sense for me and last we need to create an arrow and for this arrow we need to go to round rectangle tool all for the line segment tool i actually gonna lie uh, go to the line segment tool dissect my circle in the middle sample actually this color and i'm gonna set the stroke weight to 10 percent 10 points then go to the stroke uh, panel and project the rounded cap very nice go to the object path and outline stroke in order to create a regular adobe illustrator object then combine both of them with pathfinder really nice and push it a bit arrange it to the bottom very nice so our highlight is still visible okay and for this and for this shape i'm gonna also create with ctrl c ctrl f or ctrl c ctrl b create duplicate and sample this stroke then go to gradient again Apply, apply gradient across the stroke and reduce it to very low number i believe it to it's one point okay so it's adds a bit of dimension here you can also try some raster effects for example um, in order to create this uh, arrow i create a drop shadow let's create it now actually drop shadow okay so select original file go to the effect stylize drop shadow and for this uh, i'm gonna set opacity to 15 pixels uh, x y and blur to one pixel check preview click ok and this is basically the end of this tutorial we created a perfectly uh, we created a perfectly vector clock up icon with one exception with a drop shadow i hope you enjoyed this tutorial do not have forget that i have a course for you so you can follow to tutorials.net and download my free course how to become more productive in adobe illustrator using symbols thank you for watching have a nice day